Hey there, Griff here, leaning on a railing, holding a microphone, uh, and check this out. This is my shocked face because I was not prepared for how shockingly good Dying Light 2 is during my behind closed doors gameplay demonstration at E3 2019. Here are six ways it's going to shock you. Okay, first reason why Dying Light 2 is shockingly good is because the city is massive. It's over four times bigger than Dying Light 1 and the following combined. It takes place 15 years after the first game. There are seven regions, and each one introduces new parkour moves, enemies, and mechanics. What's really cool is how developer Techland calls the setting a modern dark age. So there are castles with drawbridges, people use bow and arrows, and, and there's a few guys in those sort of medieval ruffle, ruffle type clothes, you know, the, the big ruffles. Apparently Dying Light 2 is so massive that by the time you finish it, which takes about 20 hours, you'll only have seen 50% of content. So it's taken me quite a while to, to figure this out, but I think if you play it through uh, twice, then you'll have seen 100% of the content. Okay, here's something else that shocked me about Dying Light 2. It's the combat. The combat is bloody disgusting. Um, you know, Techland does not pull their punches, and neither do you, really. You just walk around punching everyone. At one point in the demo, a guy headbutts you, but he gets a technique wrong, and he breaks his nose, and there's blood everywhere. Uh, then you get out a big electrical sword, and you chop his head off. It's, uh, oh man, it's it's so gory. Anyway, it, it's melee focused uh, most of the time, but there are firearms too. Uh, I saw a pneumatic gun type thing, and when the ammo of that gun ran out, it could be turned upside down and used as a big hammer. So the combat is really versatile. You can climb up a rope, you can swing off it, you can chain that into a drop kick, and then you can fall on your ass. Now the reason you won't see all of Dying Light 2 in one playthrough is because the choices you make in the game, these have wildly different consequences. One big decision in the demo I saw happens after you've snuck into an encampment. You can choose whether or not to turn on the water pumps and get access to all the lovely water they're withholding. If you do release the water, it drains from the area and unveils a massive concealed city covered in seaweed. Um, and there's also a new zombie type that emerges from the mud. You can play Dying Light 2 in co-op and go into each other's world and experience what decisions they've kind of made. So if you come into my world, expect a lot of fire. You have so many moves in Dying Light 2 that, do you know what, I'm just going to reel them off. You can wall run, you can roll, you can swing from a grappling hook and paraglide through the air. You can springboard off zombies to reach new heights. You can swing on monkey bars, you can do double wall jumps, and you can slide under tables. But here's the one I like. If you're looking for a way down from a high spot, you can walk over to a zombie, give him a big old hug, and then push him off and use him to break your fall in a big old loving embrace. You can drop kick people through windows. Um, is that, that's basically all I need to say really, isn't it? Okay, lastly, let's talk about the dark zones. Essentially, these are areas filled with zombies, kind of like zombie nests. You might be walking around and then suddenly you fall through the floor and you end up in a dark zone and you just have to leg it and escape from dozens of zom zoms. For me, the only thing scarier than a zombie is like loads of zombies uh, in the dark. So those were some of the ways Dying Light 2 will shock you like it shocked me. It might lead to a face that looks not unlike this. Ah, like that. Anyway, if you like the video, subscribe to PC Games N for more. And thank you so much for watching.